Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hello, everyone. My name's Deanna, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Deanna. A little nervous. Um, um, I don't know where to start. There's so much I, you know, before I come in here tonight, um, there's so many things that I was, you know, playing out in my head, and well, I can tell about this or about that, and there's so much crap that I did, you know, while drinking, uh, that I just, you know, I just didn't know what, what to share, so we'll see what happens. I prayed too, a little meditation, drink some chamomile tea, I think I'm good. Um, <coughs> Let's see, um, I was born and raised in Southern California. Um, where'd it go? Um, uh, I was always a very sensitive kid, very nervous, um, and just, uh, and a worrier. And, um, uh, sorry guys. Um, just, yeah, just nervous, worried kid. And, um, my parents were young when they had me. Um, my mom was 17, my dad was 18. And, um, and, you know, my mom, she, uh, had some big plans for her life. And having a kid so early in life was not part of that plan. And, um, and I don't think it was my dad's either, but, uh, you know, nonetheless it happened. And, um, and, uh, my mom left when I was, uh, pretty young, and my dad raised me from then on. And, um, you know, he was a good dad. He showed up, he clothed me, he put a roof over my head, he fed me, and I had a warm place to sleep, and, and, uh, it was a pretty good life. And, um, uh, we moved around a lot, a lot. It was just me and him for quite some time, and we were always bouncing around from here to there or wherever, and uh, and I think that might have, well, added to my sense of, well, lack of sense of security, really, you know, um, with my mom leaving and already being a sensitive, nervous kid and not really comfortable in my skin, and then bouncing around all the time, um didn't make for stability. And, uh, he then got married, I guess I was about nine years old, um, to a woman who had a lot of her own pain and her own issues and stuff. And, um, she tended to kind of put that off onto me. And so, which kind of furthered the anxiety, the nervousness, the fear, the discomfort, the, you know, wanting something different, the instability, just the, all of it. And, uh, so, you know, through all the, through those years of just always being that way, I think it makes sense that when at 16, I always get confused, I can never remember if it's 15 or 16, but regardless, 15 or 16, um, I had my first drink, and um, all that stuff fell away. Like, I wasn't nervous. Um, I wasn't uh, uh, fearful. I was just relaxed. I was comfortable in my skin. I, I found what I never knew that I was looking for, or never knew that could happen, and it was an alcohol. And um, from that first drink, it was never just one. It was never just one drink. It was always, I was trashed. I would get trashed. And, um, and I'm gonna, well, at 16 that is a little out of control, but it didn't get out of control until later, really. I mean, I wasn't drinking every day. Um, it was maybe on the weekends, but always, always it was oblivion. And just from the first one. Um, I'm also going to talk real quick. I just want to let you guys know that, um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about drugs. This is, I know this is AA and this is an open meeting. 
but it is a large part of my story. And last time I spoke, I tried to dance around it and, you know, whatever, and it was just, I made a mess of it. So I'm just going to put it out there. Um, uh, so the, so I was drinking and, and you know, and, and whatever for the weekends and whatnot, and um, I found my solitude or whatever there, my peace and comfort in the alcohol, and... Um, found some courage actually in the alcohol too. I, uh, at about 16, 17, that after that first drink is when I had the courage to, um, leave home, leave the stepmom and my dad. And, and I had run, a, run away once before when I was younger, um, but I was forced to go back. But this time I left and I stayed gone. Um, so I went from, from my parents' house to my friend's house, and that's where we started drinking during on the weekends and whatnot. And um, and we uh, we went to uh, this guy that I was my first boyfriend, um, which is my other thing that I use to feel good about myself as boys or relationship. Um, anyway, she and I were over at his ha- at my boyfriend's house and uh, partying and whatever. And we had fallen asleep and didn't get home to her parents' house the next morning. And I was told that I had to leave. And so then I went and lived with a boyfriend. And, um, you know, we did the partying. And then we started in with some some of the dabbling and with some of the drugs and whatever. And um, we were together for about three years. And um, I decided I wanted something more. Than what we were doing to, you know, the, the more than the alcohol and stuff. I wanted something stronger. I wanted something more. I wanted to venture out. And um, he pretty much forbid me from doing that. So pretty much I broke up with him. I found somebody that would let me do that stuff. And um, and I did. And things got out of control. Um, I didn't. I wasn't working. I wasn't. Uh, we lived in a house. Basically, it was. Uh, um, uh, a flop house, really. There's no furniture. There was no nothing. We just kind of went there, and people came over, and we partied. Mm. And uh, and then from there, I bounced around, uh, because I left that guy. He Actually, he went to jail. That's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened for him. Um, um, so he was gone, and... And I was kind of bouncing around to friends' houses, families' houses, just, you know, bouncing around and um, not really doing much of anything except for partying, you know, and um, and dating. <laughs> um, and the first guy that, that I left, to, um, left my parents' house or my friend's house to go, um, ended up living with, his parents and I were very close after he and I split up and they had moved back out here to, out here to Florida and um since things weren't working out and we were staying in touch they said you know they invited me to come here to Florida and I figured well that sounds like a good idea things will be better out there I'll get my life straight I'll be good it's sunny Florida even though it's coming from sunny California, I'm coming, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, it's going to be good. You know, I'll get out there and, and, and I'll really, things will change. Things will be different. And um, actually, they weren't. Um, they got worse. They got worse. I I um, I got here on the first night, you know, once I, got, I came on a bus. And um, and I just kind of just went off the seat of my pants. I just she said, "Come on." I said, "Okay." She sent me a ticket, a bus ticket. I got on the bus, and I was here. I didn't call my family. I didn't tell anybody. And when I got here, I was like, and I was going to bed, and I was like, "Holy shit! What did I just do?" You know, I was like, "Okay." Well, you know, I'm, you know, and um. So then I called my mom, and my mom was floored. She's like, what? You're in Florida? So, um, so like I said, things got... Well, I will say this, that I did go to school for um, cosmetology school, and I did get um, a, a vocation. I became a nail tech. And um, so I at least did that. That was a good thing. 
And uh, so I, you know, I completed the, all, all of school and started working, and I was doing pretty well, making, you know, decent money. And um, and then I started uh, hanging out with friends and and started partying. You know, I started I started a well, the girl that I found, she wasn't a drinker like me, but that was fine. You know, she was my designated driver. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, so I just, you know, I just uh, was drinking, um, excessively. I was doing other things excessively. Um, and it just got, you know, it just got worse and worse. Um, I started bouncing around to friends' houses again. Um, I realized that in this time of sobriety, how much of a nomad I really was. I never thought I was a person that just kind of bounced around, but pretty much, I mean, from when my dad and I bounced around to, well, until the house I live in now, which is the longest I think I've ever lived anywhere, which is four years, um, I was always bouncing around. And um, so I was doing that. I was, you know, going to this friend's house or that friend's house or this boy's house or that boy's house and... Or then he and I would go bounce around to friends' houses and and um, just uh, getting crazy, ingesting whatever we could, as much as we could, every day, in any way, shape, or form that we could get it in us. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, and and you know, alcohol always present. I may not have drank it all the time, but always present, always, always, always. And, um, you know, I never felt comfortable in my skin around other people unless I had some chemical in me. I just didn't. And, um, uh, sorry, I lost my train. So, like I said, we, it got worse. We were ingesting everything. Um, and I became pregnant. And, uh, somehow, well, God, I would say, by the grace of God, I, um, I stopped doing all that stuff. To, I mean, I, I just stopped. I mean, I smoked cigarettes, of course, but, um, but I, I stopped everything in the midst of everybody continuing to party, continuing to go along. And they'd come home, and I'd be sitting there watching TV, just, you know, eating my food. I ate a lot. Um, and, uh, and they'd come and, and they'd be, uh, they'd go upstairs and, and be partying. And I remember sitting there wanting to be up there so badly, so badly I wanted to be up there partying with them and, um, and crying because I wanted to be up there so badly and crying because I was crying because of it all, because I couldn't or whatever. And, uh, and then it dawned on me that, you know, they're going to be done in a minute and it's not going to be a pretty sight. And they were done in a minute and it was not a pretty sight. And I was so grateful that I did not succumb and go out there and party with them. Um, and I thought my, uh, I thought this baby was going to save my life. It was, I thought this baby was going to change me. I thought it was going to make me better or different and, and um, make me comfortable, I guess, just better. And uh, so I success successfully um, gave birth to a baby girl. Her name is Malia. I love her to death. She is the most amazing child. That I am so blessed with that kid. I just, you know, so blessed. You know, I was driving over here oh, to drop her off at a friend's house, and. Uh, She's just amazing. I'm so grateful that that I'm here today and get to be present for her. Um, well, she didn't save me. <clears throat> um, about a couple months after she was born, um, people were still continuing to come over and party, and there was actually some new stuff coming around that I had never tried before. <clears throat> And I wanted to try it, so I did. Fell in love, and um, you know, just remember uh, her 
just wanting her to stay asleep so that I can recover in the morning. Like, I just wasn't ready because I'd been up all night or whatever. And, uh, or just her, rushing to get her to bed so that, you know, so that I can go party, you know, read her the story really quick. And I thought I was being a good mom because I was still reading the story and I would still clean the house, you know, and, every, and when I would, yeah, people would come over and I would, anything that could sh- that they touched that she could possibly touch, I was bleaching and whatever. I took in the mommy and me and I thought I was being a good mom. And, um, that, all the time I was drunk or high. And, uh, about when she, when she was about five years old, um, we decided that we were gonna, we, we needed to clean up our act. And, um, we tried to do that and it was really, it was really hard. And, uh, so on the way to ballet class, we stopped to try to, um, get what we needed, alcohol or whatever. And it, during that, that, that uh, time, um, uh, we were in the car with her in the back seat and we were approached, um, by an undercover cop. And, um, her dad had in his hand, uh, his hands just what we had just gotten. And they saw that, and of course they took her and they cuffed him and, um, and eventually cuffed me and, um, and then, and so I guess since maybe everything was, was on his person that they let me go, they uncuffed me, they put her back in my arms and, uh, sat me down in the front seat of the car. And, uh, as I sat down holding my daughter, five years old, I see on the dash, the stuff that we had just gotten. And I thought that I could get it without all the cops being. Well, they saw. And they took her out. They took her from me, and, and I went to jail. Um, I don't even remember how long I stayed in jail. Not too long, because um, the people that I moved out here um, with, um, I love them to death, and I know they love me, and they've always been there for me. So they are also my great, great, great enablers. And, uh, and that was not the first time. And I don't think it was the, I don't think it was the last time. They, no, it was not the last time they got me out of jail, but they got me out. And, uh, and I had, uh, they, I was, the custody was taken away from myself and Malia's dad. He stayed in for, a, you know, a while longer and, um, Anyway, they took custody, and I was told to go, uh, I was going to leave this part out, but I'm going to say this. Um, when he got out, we went crazy, like crazy, crazy, and we had to go into court to go ahead and, and start the process of getting her back, and um, we tested positive for nine different substances on a 10-panel test. Um so, uh, and, and we continued to drink and would do whatever for some time. I mean, uh, I was told I was supposed to go to treat, that I was, that I was gonna go to treatment, and, um, I didn't agree with them. And, um, I in fact called the, the people at the treatment center and I said, you know, I've never been in trouble before. I think you guys are, you know, just, you know, why don't you just let me hang my own, myself and, just let me try this outpatient thing instead. And they listened. They said, okay. I was like, rock on, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, um, so yeah, I went outpatient treatment and, uh, and did what I was supposed to do. I do that a lot. I, you know, um, I will do what I'm told to kind of stay under the radar, regardless of my, you know, my history of alcohol and drug abuse. Um, so I did what I was told and, um, I, I, I did, uh, graduate from that, um, from that program, um, <coughs> drinking on and off. I mean, I did, I, because I, because they could, they could catch the, um, 
the drugs on the test a lot quicker, I went immediately back to the alcohol because that I knew that you know I knew what how much time each substance took to get out, and the alcohol was the quickest. So I was back to the alcohol straight out of the bottle, and um, I did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it got pretty crazy, and but I made it through. I made it through. And um, and then they did end up catching me. Um, I won't go into all the details of that. That was just crazy back. You know, just craziness. Did drinking, drugging, drinking, drugging. I mean, it was just. I mean, just. I mean, crazy. And you had DCF coming over, and I was still being tested all this time. And and finally they caught me. And uh, she was taken back away from me, my daughter. And, um, cause I had regained custody from being a good girl. And, uh, and then I ended up back in that treatment center that they originally told me that I needed to go to. And I was talking to the, to the, um, the director and she said, yeah, I knew you'd be here. Because you needed to get it out of you. So I went through that program and I did everything that I was told. And, um, I even, and I even got a sponsor and, um, and I graduated that program and I had my own place and I, you know, and, and I was doing okay, kind of, but now I look back on it and now I know that I was just not, I mean, I mean, I had a sponsor, yes, and I did meet with her, yes, and we did, you know, go over steps, um, but the difference between working them now and working them then is just, completely different and um so you know and I guess I just wasn't ready and um I went back out after three months of being um out of the treatment facility I went back out um on a bet I bet somebody you know something and and if, and if I was wrong then we would go and then she, uh, yeah, if she was right or some, somehow it worked. But anyway, um, we went back out and we stayed out for nine months. Um, ended up back in jail again. Um, I had, after the treatment center, I was able to see my daughter again. But again, I went, when I went back out, they took her back again and I wasn't allowed to have her again. And, um, and so so we went back out for nine months and towards the tail end I just remember thinking it just wasn't working anymore it just wasn't working anymore I was nervous and fearful and uncomfortable no matter how much I ingested, it didn't matter how much I drank. It didn't, it didn't matter. I was just always, I was beating myself up. I constant, you know, thinking of my daughter and how she's probably <coughs> sitting at, uh, with her dad wondering where the hell I am. Why, you know, why isn't she here? And then I was angry at myself because now I'm doing the same thing that my mom did, you know, repeating the pattern. And, uh, it just, it just stopped, it just stopped working. It didn't cover anything up anymore. I mean, no matter, I mean, I drink in, in the morning, through all the, at night, through, at work, whatever. I mean, it just, just, it, it just stopped working. And, and, um, I knew enough. My life got good enough when I was in that treatment center and afterwards. That I knew that there was something better, and um, the person that I was I had gone back out with um, was pretty. Uh, she knew about Central. She had come around here a lot, and so that's when we um, we came here, and uh, you know, or actually, we kind of bounced around to other meetings and tried on our own and it wasn't working and and whatever and um finally well because I had some charges I guess maybe because I had some charges against me um because 
during that nine months, um, we stayed out of, uh, um, my, our friend's parents' house and, and he was gracious enough to let us stay. He didn't know us from Adam and, and we, uh, started stealing from him and then he caught wind or, you know, started realizing like stuff is disappearing and he couldn't just brush it off to, oh, maybe I misplaced that. And, um, so we figured he was probably catching on and we, booked it and uh and and then he pressed charges and um and during that time we were trying to you know because we knew he was catching on and that we so we would go to a meeting and try to try to get sober and it just it just didn't it wasn't working um and then i guess I was at my, I don't want to call my enablers, John and Ramona's house, and um, and they came and picked us up, and they got me out again. Actually, yeah, they actually they called and said they were not going to get us out, and and I promptly again because they realized that I had been stealing from them as well, and uh, so I so I said, well, if you don't get me out. Can't go to the pawn shop and get your stuff. I have to be there. <laughs> so they got me out and uh, got us out. And um, so, uh, so yeah. I mean, so you know, I don't know. I mean, it had to be God. I was done, desperate, whatever. I don't need, you know, why this time was different than all the other times. But so far, it's been different. Um, we uh, we came here to Central, and um, and you know, I just uh, I don't even remember the first couple of meetings. I know I just was here three times a day, just trying to stay sober. I'm trying not to be sitting at home feeling like crap, you know, because I couldn't, you know. Is all I could do. I don't even know if I sat still in a meeting, but I think I no, no. But I felt better here than I did at home or driving around. You know, I just knew that. So I was here, and I was talking to, I was or listening to people after the meeting, in between meetings, that I really didn't care what you were saying. I was like, this is boring and whatever. I didn't like it was. I yeah, but I sat there and listened because I'd rather be doing that. Than you know what, what I what had been doing. So um, I got a sponsor, and we started working the steps, and um, we my life started to change. Um, the charges were brought against me, and uh, the. What ended up happening is uh, somebody from this group, um, who I barely knew, ended up uh, standing up for me in that courtroom and broke his anonymity in front of the judge that he stand, stood before, like, every day. Every day. And um, that was pretty amazing. And, you know, with all the uh, grand theft and, and burglary is what my charges were, and I think something else. And I had other charges, I'm sure, that they had sitting in front of them. And, and a big group of women came with me, and, uh, like, I knew them, but I, like, today I really know them. Then I really didn't know them, but they all showed up for me, and um, they all said they're, you know, spoke to the judge for me and, and, and everything, and um, I was looking at a pretty good amount of time in jail, and I didn't end up having to go to jail. I got some community service hours. Um, some restitution, of course, um, uh, some counseling, and whatever. And uh, and again, I did all those things. I did what I was told. I completed all 300 hours of community service. <laughs> 300 hours. <laughs> and I slacked, too. But anyway, in three years of probation, I, I completed everything that they told me to do. But this time, I did not go back out and get drunk. 
the time I stayed sober. Um, and the only thing I can think of is that it was God. You know, that's the only thing I can think of that, that happened was God. I mean, I mean, I mean, because I had a sponsor before, and I started the steps before, and I did it again this time, but this time it worked. This time I heard what she was saying, and this time when I, you know, we went over step one, and 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 I looked at my life and and how I couldn't not drink, or you know, or the craziness that happened, the unmanageability of my life. I mean, it, it was you know, I was tired, it stopped working, you know, so I guess I became willing and. Um, we did the steps, and I wasn't so sure about this whole God thing or um, how it was going to work for me and, um, you know, how to do it, how to utilize, and, you know, this, spirit, this kit of spiritual tools, like, you know, what's that? You know, how do you do that? And um, she just said, believe because I believe, and let's continue on these steps, and I did that, and, you know... At any, after any step, I don't think I felt any sort of like aha or, you know, like sometimes in the book it'll say, you know, after you do step, you know, do a fifth step conversation, you feel different or elated or whatever. I didn't feel that. When I did the third step, I didn't feel some big, huge thing happen over me. Didn't do it, you know. Um, I just, but I did them. I did all of the steps, and what did happen was my life did change. You know, I was able to um, walk through difficulties, how, however uh, big or small, without drinking. You know, I mean, um, that was that's amazing, and. Uh, You know, I don't know what to say. Um, and it's not just working the steps just that one time for me. It's just not, it, it just, it isn't. Um, after working the step with my first sponsor, I, I um, asked another woman to sponsor me because I really wanted what she had. I, I wanted what she had. And um, I wanted to know how she did that. And uh, she has shown me. And um, she showed me how to work the steps in my life daily, situationally. And um, she believed in me. And she was the first person, I think, that said to me that, it would take an act of God to separate me from you. And I believed her. And she has not left me since then. Uh, nor I her. That's another thing. I do that. I skip out. And I haven't, I haven't done that. Sober. You know, um, and it has been a blessing, you know, I, God, guys, you know, I, I have this bracelet that that same woman gave me for Christmas, and it says, embrace the journey. Embrace the journey. And it may suck. It has sucked. It has sucked, you know. It hasn't been fun or easy at all the time. I mean, it has been fun, and it has been easy. It's been shitty, and it's been crappy. <laughs> but I've continued to walk through. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm constantly, and I'm, I, I talk to my friends or my sponsor or God, and, um, I've learned how to practice the steps into my life. You know, I'm not just powerless over alcohol, powerless over people, places, and things. If I remember that, if I have a resentment against somebody and say, okay, I'm powerless over this person, and uh, this resentment is unmanageable, and you know, and you know, to and to think I can manage my life is insane. You know, go through the steps on each different thing, not just alcohol. And it has uh, 
It's been amazing. It's been amazing. I today, today, you know the hole that. Okay, I'll talk for myself. The hole I walked in here with was huge, like huge, and I used alcohol, drugs, parents, boyfriends, my kid, uh, things, uh, whatever to try to fill it up, to take away the discomfort and the what fear and the whatever. And um, I am happy to say that by working these steps daily, in my, into my life daily or situationally, and trying to practice these principles, um, that hole is filled up today. I mean, really, truly, it's like filled up. Like it's weird. You know? It's like... That's, it's just, I'm still getting used to it. I don't, you know, it's weird. It's just weird. Um, I realized today that um, I don't need anybody, but I want you guys here. I don't need anybody. That is like a first ever in my entire life that I didn't need somebody to fix me, to make me feel better. For, I'm not going to say my age, but um, <laughs> for a long time, a little while, 20 years. Um, um, I've always needed somebody or something to, to fill it up, and I don't need it. I don't need it. Um, and I believe, I believe it is through the steps and through you guys, you know, all of you guys, sharing in a meeting. When I'm sitting in a meeting and you know, and I need, you know, need to hear something and, you know, my connection with God is just not, I'm in the way. And I'm sitting in a meeting and, uh, somebody says, maybe quote something out of the book or quote something from a movie. And, uh, and it's just what I need to hear. I just I remember, it reminds me that I, you know, Everything is good. Um, that I have a solution today, and it's not alcohol or anything else. Um, and I have a way out. I have, this, I have a way out. And throughout my sobriety, um, I have I have uh, been faced with with situations or confrontation or. betrayal, whatever, and, um, and I have a way out for that stuff, the pain, I have a way out, it's called the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, and the big, big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, and that is my way out, you know, that is, it, it, it has worked every time, in fact, right now I'm, um, um, I'm reworking the steps again, and, uh, and I thought to myself, I don't know if this is going to work for me. It's been working now for a while, a couple of years. But I didn't think it was going to work for me this time. I said, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to fix me. I'm not going to get any better. I'm going to stay stuck here, miserable, struggling. I'm never going to get better. And uh, I was wrong again. And um, with each step I that I do with this... Each step that I do, I it's almost amazing. I didn't notice it the first time or any of the other times that I've practiced the, the steps in my life. But with each step this time, you know, the principles come true. Like when I did, I don't know that I really noticed it actually in, in step one, but um, not to say that I'm not honest. But, uh, but in step two, like faith came. Faith came, and I was just like, "Wow, it's working," you know. And and um, and right now I'm I'm I'm, I'm waiting to do step five. Um, so I felt the hope. I have a lot, you know, and and the courage. Um, I keep waiting for some huge thing to happen with courage. But what I understand about courage is, it's just um, it's just walking through the fear just walking through the fear and um 
And I guess, I, you know, I was fearful about getting up here and I'm walking through it. It's cursed. Um, you know, my life is so much different today. I mean, my daughter, like I said, is, is amazing. There's so many gifts. I wish, you know, I don't know. There's just so many things. Like the hole is, is, is filled up. Um, I have a way out. I have a solution to my problem, which comparatively to when I was out there, nothing. Nothing. I don't have to go to jail. I don't have to go to in front of a judge. I don't have to um, uh, be worried that DCF is going to come over. I don't have to be worried that uh, my daughter's father is going to see that I'm messed up again. I don't, you know, I, none of those things are is, is happening. You know, I have a, excuse me, a really great life today. I like who I am. I like who I am today, and. Uh, And I think that's like the biggest gift, you know, that I like who I am today. And, um, and I keep, I'm willing to grow, I'm willing to learn, and I, and I, and, and I think that keeps happening for me from God, uh, with God's grace. I have a, such a, um, God is who I lean on today. Truly, really. Like I've said that before, and I and knew it up here, but here, it's really true. You know, in my heart, it's really true. Um, you know, like I said, I've been in that same house for four years. I've had the same job for four years. Um, and I... I'm about to uh, switch job or switch locations of a job, and um, I was a little a little vexed about which where to go. And um, today, I'm happy to say that I can make decision like a good decision, like a God decision, because one one place offers really good money. The other place, I feel comfortable and safe and, and, and good in here. So that's the one I'm going to go with. You know, um, even a year, a couple of years ago, I would don't think I would have made that decision. You know, when I moved to the place that I'm at currently, it was because of more money. <coughs> and it stopped to check to see if it felt right here. Just money, okay. Um, and, and the other thing too today is, well, yeah, I can take care of myself. I am, um, and some, I can take care of myself and I don't need anybody to take care of me. I pay my bills, which I, I had never done up until the last couple of years. Never done. It was either parent or a boy that would take care of me. And I do that today. And again, I believe that that's because of this program, you guys, this, you know, the steps, the book, and getting in the middle. You know, for anybody that's new, I, you know, I just get in the middle, talk about where you're at, talk about how, you, how you're feeling, um, because it's okay. Not I all end with this. Not too long ago, um, just a few months ago, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't be honest with where I was at, and that was probably could have been, could have been um, my way back out, because I was hiding. I would kind of talk, but not really, because I was afraid of what other people thought. But they were, I was, I thought that they were expecting what I was expecting of myself. And, um, and I did share about it and I did feel better. So no matter how long you've got, you've been in here, don't keep it in, share about it, talk about it. I wouldn't say, you know, like in the meeting, like don't like, I wouldn't suggest you throw out all, out all the details in a general way. I'm not in a good place, struggling with 
whatever, you know, but talk about it. The power in this room is amazing, and that is what has helped to keep me sober. Um, one of the things that has helped keep me sober, and um, yeah, because I don't want to go back out there. I don't want to try to look good, so, you know, and end up back out there. Um, I'm grateful for this program and you guys and, and, and um, what it's done for my life and and hopefully my daughters. I think it's, yeah. You know, that's all I got. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.